Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Solo. Today, we tackle the River Bell Path and go for a nice hike. They say that wicked creatures prowl the road along this beautiful riverbank, but nobody's ever seen one. I once asked a man why. He simply replied, because anybody who happens upon one is promptly eaten. But it is long since anyone has met such a fate. For nowadays, people take another route, far away from the spooky old road. Only we walk the old way now. Travelers in crystal caravans. Music. It's so good. Alright, now I've attempted to record this before. Let's see, we're gonna take a striped apple here. And the last time I tried to record this, I died twice. Because I don't know how to play a Selkie as it happens. Actually, I'm gonna take this for a second. We come over here, and we have to drop it to read this thing. Fine. Right to the roundabout route, and left to the scenic route. Well, I have no idea where we're supposed to go then. But anyways, now I've been playing a lot of co-op videos with my friend. So I've been playing Clavat, and Clavat's pretty tanky. Also, it's only half the bridge, we can't go this way yet. So I'm gonna get Mog to carry this chalice for me. But because I've been playing a Clavat who's fairly tanky, I'm just trying to walk up to enemies and hit him in the face. You can't really do that with a Selkie. Selkies are Fairly, mm, what's the word? Fragile. You gotta play a little more hit and run game with them. Also, their attacks are super slow. Although well, that guy died in one hit, and I'm pretty okay with that. So you gotta play very hit and run, which is not my preferred style, but whatever. Also, this smoke's attack seems like godsend. I didn't actually use it before. It's slow to charge up, and you get knocked out of it really easily. So, there's that. Come along, Mog. We got stuffs to do. Open this up and cure. I'm still going to keep the striped apple on, though, because I don't have to charge that up to use it. And then also, as you might have seen in the item description earlier, it temporarily increases my magic, which I'm going to want if I want to use fire. Just because it's a little more AoE than my focus attack is. Oh, what's this say? Right lots of monsters and left lots of monsters. You son of a... I saw that coming in the camera shot. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't actually hit me. But he did, so he's a douchebag. Stone of Life. I don't know if that's actually useful at all when you are solo. I mean, you can use it to, like, fuse a spell. That's probably all it's good for. Oh, I have a phoenix down. Oh, my God. Oh, right, I picked up that phoenix down, so now I don't have, um... Yeah. Fire. We're just gonna put fire on now. And, uh, here. Whoa, what was that? Did you guys see, like, that weird momentum I had? Was that just carried over from before? Anyway, set that on fire. And then that should do a fair amount of damage. Now, this is the guy who wrecked me twice. But I have learned to completely annihilate him, so he's not even a problem anymore, and I look stupid for even admitting that I died to that guy twice. But hey, we can't all be perfect. Not all the time. But something I did want to mention, though, is... It's been a really long time since I finished this game, and I've only finished it once. So I'm listening to the... Part of the reason I'm quiet during those little intros for these levels is because I'm listening to them for 
what may as well be the first time as well. It's been a really long time since I've heard them. I find it interesting that the narrator actually counts herself among the Crystal Caravanners. Makes me wonder if we'll ever see them, or if we'll, we'll ever know who they were. Or anything. Who might they be? We can't go this way yet. That's cool. Uh, the the co-op LPs uh, explorations of these areas are not going to be 100%. I can already tell you that much, considering I've done like four or five of those dungeons, and only a couple of been 100%. But I'm not sure if I'll try and do 100% solo. I might. It depends if I want to look stuff up before I do the video or not. Some, sometimes I feel like doing that for LP, sometimes I don't. It's, it's really... It's a shot in the dark, whether I do it or not. For this first video, or er, this first dungeon though, I'll probably do 100%. I mean, it's not too hard. The river bell path is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, da, 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 where am I supposed to be going? That way is a place... I want to go this way. One of the nice things about single player is that Mog can actually keep up with you when he's carrying the Crystal Chalice, unlike another person in multiplayer. Oh, but he does get tired, and then he wants you to carry it for a while. But what you can do, there's a little bit of a trick to this. When he's tired, he will slow down if I remember right. What you can do is you can keep mashing X until he wants to pick it up again. I don't know. Whatever. I'm just going to carry it for a bit. There's a little trick you can do to make him uh, carry it while being tired, but then want to take it back. Okay. Remember what I was saying about hit and run tile, uh, style? Ugh. We got a little bit of a thing to do here. Oh, God. Mog, I really need you to pick that up so I can come heal. Shit, I'm died. I tunnel vision super hard on the goblin and forgot that there was a raccoon right behind me. Because I'm good at this game. But you see what I mean. Uh, what I mean when I say Selkies need to be played hit and run. At least at the beginning. Because we're super fragile. Words. Hard. But when you die, everything stays the same. All the monsters you kill are still gone. That was bad English. But hey, I was not charging a folk stack, I was charging Kino, which is cool, because I needed the heal about a minute ago. Alright. Now this guy, if he chops you with his sword, he does like a weird amount of damage. I've seen him hit me for like three hearts for no reason, and then I've seen him hit me for like one and a half hearts. So I don't know if he there's crits in this game or what. But he just decided to die once, for no reason. I'm not going to carry anything. I could carry another oil pot and set it on fire, but meh. Hello, hedgehog. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. See, he only hit me for like half a heart or something. Burn! I'm not sure if magic charge is faster than focus attacks, especially for selkies, because they got a pretty quick... He's hit me for like a heart. But I've seen him, like, kill me in two attacks. Okay. Also, for the Selkies, their defense... Oh, whoops. That's the wrong button. Let me see if I can do it. They have an invincible backflip. Which is good, because... A lot of defenses are directional. Well, at least the Clavitz's. I don't remember the Lilties or the Yuki's offhand. Like I said, only finished this game once. And when I did finish it... Er... When I do play this game, I never finish it. I don't know why. Let's see. Right to the Moogle House, left to the old road. Dead end. But I do see a treasure chest! So, gimme. What's in here? Bronze armor. Let me check. I can't remember if armor can be used by anyone or just clavets. Suit of armor for anyone. Cool. What was that other thing I got? Bronze belt. Designed for selkies. Cool. Alright. This dungeon is almost over. There's a couple more things I want to look at. Ooh, another sign. Right to the Moogle House, left extreme danger, Kubo. Indeed, don't go that way. Not yet. Until you get to the Moogle House. 
Unlike most Moogles, they live out in the open instead of in a cave. Oh, a caravan, Koopa! There's no mer tree here, Koopa! Sorry, we can't offer you anything, Koopa. We just moved here, so we really have nothing to offer, Koopa. Oh well. Nice to talk to them, at least. I'm trying to think if we skipped over anything. I don't think we did, so let's keep moving. Did we? No. I'm gonna say no and just keep going. You can always come back later if you want. You're not bound. When you enter a dungeon, you're not bound to finish it, so you can run and grab something you missed and leave. Look at you, you giant crab monster, son of a bitch. Alright. Primary drops a little bit during this fight. So things charge slower. Oh, as a... If you were a clavat, I would say just run and bash the crap out of you with your sword. As a selkie, I'm gonna advise uh, missing every single one of your focus attacks. That's a good idea. Obviously, if you're a Yuki, you want to spam some magic. I I think this guy's weak to Blizzard? Blizzard or Thunder? And I have an extra slot for some reason, and I don't know why, actually. So we're gonna put Thunder and Blizzard on. Let's see which one is good. The Selkies actually... No, I don't wanna... Split those, please. The Selkies actually don't have a very great magic stat, but... Hey, let's find out. Ooh, don't get hit by that. That is a slow. And slow is one of the last things you want to be hit by. This guy inflicted by. So he's completely immune to thunder. You'd think he wouldn't be, because he's a water creature, but he is. Oh, I'm slowed. At least he sure seems like it. But it looks like he was weak to blizzard. I'm just gonna smack my racket though. The basic physical attack of the Selkies. Not too strong, but the focus attack seems to be doing a fair amount of damage. No! Crap. Yeah, the reason why you don't want to be slow is because of that AoE attack he's got. That's the way. No, I'm not sure what it is. I have an idea. Let's see if Ma will help us out with the magic. He's going to. Ooh, no thank you. Come on. Mog, I hate you. Mog, cast the magic. Alright, he doesn't want to anymore. So, let's we'll just beam up with a crack at this. Ouch. Cure. Run, don't get by that. Cool. And hit him with the rack some more. I think it's when he says hang in there that he'll cast magic. I don't know. I don't know Mog's tendencies. He's stupid. He doesn't help you at all. He's a scumbag. In every sense of the word. Oh, that hit him. Wow, okay. I'm surprised by that. Can you stop that? Alright, now he's got no giant hammer face. So he's gonna spam magic on us. And probably more bubbles. That looks like fun Dara to me. I seem to remember the Aura spells, or the Raw spells, rather, having AoE effects in this game. Kinda like in, uh, Fortnite. I'm sure other games too that I just can't think of off the top of my head. Uh. Uh, I'll tank the hit. Cause I'm gonna kill you anyway. Uh. Dead. Goodbye. And of course, the boss was guarding a murder tree.
monsters can survive in the in the miasma without any protection from the crystals. But I don't know if they're drawn to the myrrh at all. Maybe that's something we'll find out later on in the story. It, it's kind of, uh, I hesitate to say Dark Souls-like because games do it all the time and, it's not, and they're not like Dark Souls at all. But it's very Dark Souls-like in that the story is told through context. Or like, a character will give you some insight into the story just by talking about the world. So it's very much not about a main narrative. I kind of like it that way. It makes you feel like you're exploring crap. Whoops. Pull the mic off. Alright, cool stuff. That is one of three mer drops that we need for this year. But at the end of every dungeon, we get a letter. A letter from who? Oh, this time it's from Roland. Let's see what it says. How is everything? You may be facing hardships that drag your spirits down, but always remember that the caravan gives hope to us all. May you return safely, Sirocco. Ah, thank you. Hmm. Let's send an item. Let's send, uh... Vegetable seed. Uh... Actually, no. Let's send something else. Save the vegetable seed for the fam jam. Send some water. And yes, we shall proceed. And that's all for that time. Take the letter off. Go away, Mayo Moogle. May you journey in safety. I honestly don't know how he finds us. Or how he gets through the dungeon by himself. I mean, we honestly, we killed everything, but... You know, maybe there's other monsters that we didn't see. Oh, so I did miss a treasure. Damn it. There's always enough treasures to fill the entire ring. My bad. Oh, well. Let's grab this Moogle Pocket. We got the important ones, which are Moogle Pockets. Moogle Pockets and Chocobo Pockets in both increase your maximum command list uh, size. But you can't just... You can't keep grabbing Moogle Pockets, even though you might find them in consecutive dungeons. So you have to grab Chocobo Pockets. And uh, I think there's another event. Yes, there is. Have you heard of the Black Knight? They say he's on a journey to master the art of swordsmanship. Few these days ever set out to better themselves. You would do well to master something before your journey ends. That I would. We got a new memory. Like I was saying in the last episode, memories are very important to this game. It's kind of a follow-up to Final Fantasy IX that way. Ooh, another event. You can get a lot of events. I'm not sure if these are random or if it's whenever you come to an intersection that there's a chance that one shows up. I've definitely, like, gone back and forth between the same intersection more than once and seen, like, seven events. Looks like another caravan to me, though. I wonder where their sick horse thing is, though. Oh, hello there. Oh, hello. Well, how are things going? Why, wow, you've been busy, haven't you? It's about time we got serious, too. Mm, yeah, we'll get moving tomorrow. Right, well, see you around. Farewell. In this Let's Play, you will be subject to my horrible accents all the time. Because I can't help it, but they just sound like they should sound like that. Now, what's... We're actually going to go see what our next dungeon is. But first, we're going to go explore Port Cove. Port Cove. Ah. Cove, Cove, Cove. It's a little quaint little town. The only thing of note that I can think of is there's a Moogle house. Hello, Moogle. He lives in lovely tranquility. Yes, I'm here for a mog stamp. Koopa? 
You don't have a mog stamp? Let me tell you about mog stamps, Koopo. Damn it. We Moogles are found all over the world, Koopo. We offer mog stamps as an incentive to locate and visit all our homes, Koopo. You'll need the stamp card to get my mog stamps, Koopo. The stamp card is 23 squares, Koopo. They're divided into sets of 1 to 3 squares matching colors, Koopo. And there are 9 different kinds of mog stamps, Koopo. Each Moogle will stamp one onto your card, Koopo. If you collect a set of matching stamps, tell Moogle who gave you one of those stamps, Koopo. Did you get all that, Koopo? Yeah, I, I got it. Okay, here's your first stamp. Get out there and find more, Koopo. Sweet. So, the stamp card is only good for getting you more levels of a terrible mini game that you can only access if you have Game Boy Advance hooked up to the GameCube. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. And I'm probably not going to get all of them. I've never have. I'm too lazy to do. Paint me, Koopo! Sure. Alrighty. So, this is something, obviously... Uh... Yeah. This is something, obviously, you can only do in single player because Mog doesn't show up in multiplayer. You could paint him. If you paint him different colors, he... Uh... He'll cast different spells. So, if you paint him all red, he's more likely to cast fire. Now, you can also trim his fur, which is good if you're going to take him to a really hot dungeon. He'll get tired faster if you have more fur on him. Now, I'm actually just going to paint him blue, just because I like how he looks when he's blue. I might have to speed this up, to be honest. This could take a while. Paint everything blue. Paint him entirely blue. Just because I like blue has nothing to do with me wanting him to cast Blizzard. I just want to paint him blue. God damn it. Okay. There it is. The controls on making him turn are very funny. I'm pressing down to make him turn to the right. Figure that one out. And if I pressed up there, he fell over. I don't... Okay, I pressed left and... Like, I, I don't understand. Looking good, Koopo! Uh, that time I pressed right to make him go right, so I don't know. L and R change the color and or whether you're using scissors, so that's not how you turn him, trust me. It makes no sense. But hey, we got a full 360 on him. Now he's blue. Blue is good. And this paint job does show up in uh, in game, like during dungeons. Exactly. Oh, I missed a spot. Exactly how you paint him, he will show up. It's kind of cool, actually. Good. Paint this part, and then no mog. God damn it! I hate you, mog. All right. Um. Let's give him some green right here. Give him a nice little spot. Just like that. Ugh. That kind of looks like ass, but good enough. Actually, just put a little bit of red right there. How about that? That looks just fine to me. And by just fine, I mean it looks terrible, but I don't know how to paint people. I'm not a tattoo artist. I'm not a body painter. Um... That looks like everything we can do here. This, if you go down all the way, it's the beach where Stiltskin taught us how to fight. But, doesn't look like there's anything else to do here. We can go up. I think there's a exit to the world map, apparently. It was the other side that you wanted to go. I think it's just a lookout. Look at the ocean or something. I mean, the water effects in this game are really nice looking. Ooh, another vent. See what I mean? Yeah, you just kind of pop up on cro on uh, intersections. What do we got here? Some Yukis. Say, Kovalander, would you buy some Yukis wisdom for a sum of ten gil? Yes, please. Good. Now, if you ever encounter a flan, remember this. Uh, thanks. We're going to have to read our diary entry if we want to figure out what he said, hopefully. I don't know. I've never read that entry. And it's interesting because I actually got that uh, event when I was playing one of the co-op episodes. I think it was like five or six. And yes, the co-op LP is that far ahead of this one. 
I just don't have time to do it. Now, this is one of the Miasma streams. Actually, wait one second. Did I pass? I did pass Diltskin. Confound it! A Miasma stream, I can't stand these things. It's so irritating. We Moogles aren't phased by Miasma, but these places give us the creeps. But for you people, the danger of Miasma is always on your minds, right? The travel would be more pleasant if we didn't have to worry about places like this. On the other hand, it would be pretty dull without a challenge now and then. These dreams can be a bother, but what doesn't make what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? That is true. And yes, I know his voice changed from the first episode. I kind of remember what the voice was, but I don't remember how I did it. It's kind of it sounds more like this, man. I'm a cool guy. But I don't know. Whatever. I think at the start of that dialogue uh, sequence, I tried to make him sound a little bit skullish, but that failed. And a new dire entry. It's our first experience crossing the Asma stream. Now, for these things, if your element, if the element of your chalice is of a different element than the Miasma stream, you can't cross it. That's what that big bubble was about. And of course, it was water. That's why I changed it in the Riverville path. Now, next time on Retsupre Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, we go to the Mushroom Forest. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you all next time. Bye.